What's the word, y'all? The season is over. It is officially over. And and I can say with, with all the things that the NBA, the fans, everybody went through this season, overall this season was a success. I personally will not be a person that will look at this season, look at the results, and talk about all the what-ifs, all of the injuries, all the things that might have impacted the ending. I'm just going to look at the ending and say what a magnificent ride it was, man. Um, game six was just as good as game five, just as good as game four. And ultimately, I think NBA fans can walk away from this series, even though it was two unlikely teams, and say that, wow, we got a great performance. The Milwaukee Bucks are NBA champions, y'all. Do you hear me? The Milwaukee Bucks are NBA champions for the first time in 50-ish years. It is insane. I don't really want to talk about the game too much. Hey, you saw it. You wa- You had to watch. It's game six. Um, I do want to highlight Giannis. Because um, right now, that's the only thing that matters, right? I could talk about the fact that the Suns continue to try to go right at Giannis, try to get the pick and roll switch. Like, I'm not an X's and O's guy. Um, but it was just weird to see Chris Paul and Devin Booker keep getting the switch to Giannis, and Giannis is just dominating on the perimeter in the paint. I don't know. I'm not an X's and O's guy. But eventually, I thought they would stop going to Giannis, but they did it. Giannis was as dominant as anybody. You know what? I have fall victim to recency bias just like anybody else. Right? If you're a person that said you haven't fell into recency bias throughout this playoffs, I don't believe you. Show me the receipts. Show me your tweets. Because I definitely have fallen into recency bias. For example, I think I'm going to make a whole video um, saying the title of it might be My Apologies. Um, basically going over all my bad takes or bad opinions or recent opinions that I had throughout the playoffs, throughout the NBA season that were completely wrong. I'm trying to get better at what I do, y'all. For example, DeAndre Aiden was... As dominant as anybody for a three series. I even said on the video that like, out of all the big men that have played in the playoffs, DeAndre Aiden has stood taller than all of them. And I don't think that's a terrible one to say. Obviously, he didn't have an overall better series than Jokic did or overall better series than, than Joel Embiid did in those couple series. But I just thought that his impact throughout this run was so great and he was one of the main reasons why they were there when the finals he was neutralized so (laughs) that old take from two weeks ago not really relevant right now so i'm gonna make a whole video talking about my apologies and going over all the things i was wrong about because i really do believe that in order to be successful in a field like this you have to look at yourself and laugh when you say and do do stupid things or when you say and do the wrong things it's inevitable as a guy that talks about basketball trying to make predictions, you're going to be wrong. You know what I'm saying? Another one on my apologies video. Why am I spoiling it? But, bud, Coach Boonehoser, we'll talk about that later. He's an NBA champion coach right now. He's an NBA champion coach right now. A month ago, I still saw Bucks fans with the fire bud profile picture. He's an NBA champion coach. Two games ago, last game, this man did the unimaginable by playing a lineup that has saw zero minutes together in a 70-game series, a 70-game regular season, and multiple playoff games. They had never been on the court together, and in a game four, wait, oh no, no, in a game five, when you needed to win, he's like, let's run out three big men. Let's see what happens. And it was amazing. And then he come back in game six, and that same lineup dominates. It's kind of crazy, bro. Coach Bud, I, you know. Give you my flowers. Give you my flowers. Let's go back to Giannis. I know I'm all over the place, but let's go back to Giannis. The most dominant performance, and again, I'm trying not to be recency biased here, but this really feels like one of the most dominant finals performances I've seen in the last five, ten years. Like, I, it's hard to look at some of LeBron's finals and say, like, hey, uh, Giannis was more dominant than that. You know what I'm saying? But it's very, very close. Some of some of the LeBron finals rings and specifically the 2018 one, right? 2018. The 3-1 comeback year was ridiculous. But in the recent years, to do it on both sides of the floor, be the best offensive player while also being the best defensive player on the perimeter and in the paint is ungodly. I never 
Giannis could listen. If Giannis never won another ring in his NBA career, I don't want to hear nothing else. He has showed us in this playoff run that all of the jibber jabber, oh, he needs to do this to his game, you got to do this to this game. It doesn't matter. The man put up 50 in a finals clinching game. 50 on one May 3, by the way. 50. And you know what's more impressive than the overall 50 number? 17 from 19 from the free throw line. From Shaquille O'Neal to Stephen Curry at the line like this. And you can hear a pin drop in Milwaukee when he was at the line. Them fans really got acquired. He was in Zen. He was in his peaceful place. And they don't win this game if Giannis isn't as efficient from the free throw line. Because other than Giannis, they didn't really get that big of a performance from the other guys. Other than Bobby. We'll talk about Bobby. But, like, uh, Chris Middleton struggled for a lot of this game. He had some big shots down the stretch Chris Middleton way. Um, Drew Holiday struggled. He had a really big shot. I think it was um, late third quarter. Um, P.J. Tucker scored zero points right here. I don't know. How many points did P.J. Tucker score this series? Six total? I don't know. He was impactful defensively. It was the Giannis Adetokounmpo game and series. What I saw in this series is Giannis realizing something that all of us knew, but we don't. I don't really think about it. Like, okay, Giannis could be this dominant every single regular season game, and he's a portion of this dominant every single regular season game. You don't win two MVPs without being dominant. But I mean, like, once the finals came around, he didn't care about anything else but putting that ball in the paint and protecting the, uh, the protecting his home goal. That was it. He didn't care about the minutes played. He didn't care about the fatigue. He didn't care about his back, his knee, nothing. Because I know he came to the realization that, listen, not every player, no matter how great you are, not every player gets to be in a position to compete for a championship. Some of the greatest individual players we've seen ever never even got to compete in the finals, or when they did get to compete in the finals, did not win it. And I think Giannis saw that and dominated it's it like Giannis's interviews, this whole, I talked to, we talked to JJ Redick about this on his podcast. I don't know if that whole thing come out. I know they showed a little clip of it. Um, and I was, I was picking the brains of JJ Redick and Tyrese Halliburton because they're actually NBA players, right? They're see the, they see the game way deeper than me and you ever would because they, they in there, they're in the trenches, especially JJ, 15 year career, whatever it is, right? So I asked him about like the X's and nose and what he was saying is like the X's and nose is cool. We can get that. But what's more impressive about the Giannis's performance and the Giannis whole run is the way he comes to the podium after a game, pre-game, whatever, and just drops gems of knowledge. Like, he's way wiser than his years. He's a year and a half older than me. But I have learned so much from Giannis in the last two weeks just from watching his interviews. The living in the moment thing you can tell was 100% him. He played every single game like it was a game seven. And you saw it. After the buzzer... When he goes to sit down on the baseline and he's crying, I got teary. I, I'm not a Bucks fan. Shit, I was rooting for Chris Paul. <laughs> but to see a guy like Giannis win a finals with all the adversity that he had to go through for these last couple years of him being a two-time MVP and no matter what, nobody talked about it. Everybody talked about how it should have been this player. Oh, he shouldn't have won his defensive player of the year. Oh, he's, he, he, he's not skilled. To see him win a championship and break down instantly almost broke me down. Drew Holiday donated a portion of it. When they went to the bubble, all of the money he made in the bubble, he donated to black businesses that were affected by the coronavirus. PJ Tucker, I got a PJ Tucker hat in here. During the pandemic, he put together a clothing brand where percentage, I, it might have been 100%, I don't remember, of the proceeds went to food banks in Houston because he was still a part of Houston. Um, um th these are the type of players. Giannis donated a hundred thousand dollars to the people in the arena that lost their jobs because of COVID. They didn't have a place, the concession workers. These are the type of people that are on the Milwaukee Bucks. So as much as I want to see Chris Paul get that ring, I'm not upset about the Bucks winning. Drew Holiday, and I don't know how many of y'all remember this, took a step away from basketball because his wife got ill. If I'm not mistaken, she had a brain tumor. Or something like that. He completely took a step away from basketball to focus on his family. And it's, it's just such an amazing guy. Every interview. Like, there, okay, there are there are a list of players 
that if I see them have an interview, I will drop whatever I'm doing to listen to that person talk. Drew Holiday's one of those dudes. He's just one of those dudes. Milwaukee did it, y'all. Milwaukee did it. And my my phone is blowing up with tweets, retweets, ev everything. Everything, man. This is as this is good for the NBA. Now, I think no matter who would have won, the NBA would walk out of here and say, this is good for us because we had a smaller market or a team that hasn't been here in a very long time winning championship. But for it to be Milwaukee means a lot. This man, Giannis, trusted his front office so much when everybody a year and a half ago was photoshopping him in their favorite team's jersey. And hey, Milwaukee ain't the place. It's a small market. You can spread your wings in L.A., you can spread your wings in New York. Hell, the Bulls had some photoshops of them. I, I may have retweeted a couple of them. No, he took his shot on the small market team that took a shot on him ultimately eight, how many, eight years ago, nine years ago? And he stayed loyal. And even I am guilty of saying like, man, I wish he would have waited to sign that extension. Just because I, I don't trust, not the Bucks front office specifically, but I typically don't trust front offices to do the things that need to be done to win a championship. Giannis did. He trusted his ownership. He, he, he trusted his GM. He trusted his coach. Listen, after the things that Bud has done in the last three seasons, if Giannis would have said, I think it's time, get Bud out of here, Bud would have been gone like this. But Giannis loves Bud. And they, he rolled it out, and they won a championship. The moves that this team has done in the last six or whatever years needs to be on a secret base video. How the Milwaukee Bucks won a championship. Because it started off with Brandon Jennings. Going against the Miami Heat, saying Bucks in six, even though they were going against one of the greatest teams of all time, and they were the 18, and they were below 500 team. Same offseason. Brandon Jennings get traded to Detroit for guess who? Chris Middleton. Same offseason, they draft Giannis. We believe that this kid, Chris Middleton, who was just in the G League a year ago, we believe that he can be something eventually. The kid from Greece that people didn't even know he existed to a month before the NBA draft, we believe he can be something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll allow those two to grow. We're going you know, to try to draft. We're going to still have Barbie. We're going to still try to hit a home run on Thon Maker. We're going to do stuff like that still. But we believe in these two guys. And eventually, those two guys both became all-stars. And eventually, one of those two guys became an MVP. And eventually, one of those guys turned to a two-time MVP. And the whole lo lo a ride alone, they made deals for Brooke Lopez. They drafted Dante DiVincenzo, who hasn't played, but he's such a big part of this. They drafted Pat Connaughton, who led the, this whole series in three-pointers made. And this offseason specifically, this season specifically, they deserve all the praise. Because they gave up a lot to get Drew Holiday. An absolute lot. And though he didn't have the greatest offensive performances all series long, Drew Holiday... Showcase why people look at it as a big three. Defensively, Chris Paul couldn't do a damn thing for six games. Davin Booker struggled whenever Drew Holiday was on top of him. They threw picks. They threw players. They threw everything. And then the, the biggest move, I mean, well, that's the biggest move, but another move that's super, super underrated is the P.J. Tucker trade. It just really is. Dante DiVincenzo is on a scooter right now. And if Dante DiVincenzo gets hurt and you don't have P.J. Tucker, well, now Pat Connaughton, who you rely on to give you good minutes off the bench, is now in the starting lineup. And you don't have any more wings after that. P.J. Tucker finished his game with 0 for 1. And I think that only shot attempt was in the fourth quarter. But those 36 minutes he played were valuable minutes. Without that trade of P.J. Tucker, they might not win a championship. It's a small trait in a grand scheme of things, but that added depth really hurt, helped their team. Bobby Portis, a guy that I've always liked since the Bulls drafted him, always liked Bobby Portis, always knew Bobby Portis had good potential. The only thing I would say about Bobby Portis, it felt like sometimes he believed that he should have been a superstar, an all-star player, when in reality, he's hella talented, don't get me wrong. But that wasn't what his role was going to be in the NBA. And in the post-game interview, he talked about him getting into a place mentally, mentally, that he was okay with whatever role he was given. And that elevated Bobby Portis to be the prime six-man type player. I mean, 
all the energy that he gives, being a badass, those type of things are super valuable. You can't put a price tag on those type of things, man. For him to come out in the game six and score 16 points, get under the skin of Chris Paul, under the skin of Devin Booker, it's super, super valuable, bro. I'm happy. I'm, I'm happy for the Bucks. Yes. We can have an hour video about Chris Paul. Where do the Suns do next? Could they get to this, this place again soon with Chris Paul? We can have a conversation about that. That ain't super fun to me, though. It ain't. I think we have a whole offseason to talk about what the Suns could do next. Um, DeAndre Aiden. <laughs> I think I talked about it a little bit. I know he's in foul trouble, for sure. He's guarding Giannis for a majority of this game. Frank Kaminsky had a better game than him tonight. Frank Kaminsky had a better game than him tonight. It's kind of tragic. This is this is good for the NBA. Because <clears throat> we're, we're definitely going to see superstar players end up in smaller markets. We just will. And Giannis winning a championship on a small market team. Hell, I've seen so many. I'm, it's it, The best thing about tonight, I will say. The best thing about tonight is seeing other NBA players give their roses to the Milwaukee Bucks. Because... One of the things that people have been talking about on Twitter is the NBA players not coming up and saying congratulations to Giannis or how dominant a performance Giannis has had. LeBron, CJ McCollum, um, and the, the younger guys. This is super fun. John Morant tweeted saying, like, I need to know this feeling. John Morant is in a smaller market. And I bet seeing Giannis do that with the team that took a shot on him in a smaller market is motivating John Morant to eventually stay around and try to get that, that same feeling, but with the Grizzlies and not trying to, I'm not going to say get rid of the grind, but stop the grind too early. Because Giannis could have stopped the grind too early, honestly. He could have, but he didn't. Same thing, uh, Trey Young, I know uh, Atlanta's not a small market, but Trey Young, he tweeted, I got to see, I got to know that feeling a couple times. Jamal Murray tweeted, I need to get back in the lab or something like that. It's a long list of young players that see the Milwaukee Bucks winning a championship and like, I can do that with my team. I think that's amazing. Kay Cunningham is about to get drafted to the Detroit Pistons. He could be watching this at home and be like, another Midwest team, another relatively small market. I can do that for them eventually. Give me, give me seven, eight years like Giannis got. I could do that eventually. It's so amazing, man. It's so amazing. I'm, I'm so happy for the league. I don't know what the numbers say as far as viewership, but I know the people that did stick it through and watch these games are so happy with the, with, with the product. They're so happy with how good these games were. Officiating wasn't great, but I heard that Adam Silver and, and the MBPA um, are going to have meetings to try to change officiating, change some rules, um, me and the homies had a conversation early today on our podcast. That's the Through the Wire podcast. Go subscribe to that channel. We're trying to hit 50K over there. About some of the FIBA rules being incorporated to now the NBA. And one of them has to do with the foul baiting thing. Give it a foul baiting. I think the product gets even better for next season. Um, and, it, and it allows the NBA to stop having the, the moments or the games where people are like, oh, the officiating calls this. When you get rid of that. Um, another rule I want to see the NBA incorporate from FIBA, there's a couple possessions in this in this game where Giannis blocked the shot and it was a 24-second violation. And one of them, he was damn near about to dunk the ball before they w blew the whistle. In the FIBA world, if you block a shot and the shot clock is over, that's a live ball. Giannis could have went down there and dunked and had 52. Um, Steph Curry, I guess, also showed love. See, that might have happened since I hit record on this. So this this is just so amazing, man. Um, and I know some of y'all are wondering what happens now with, with this channel specifically now that we don't have recaps. The offseason is personally where I absolutely love to talk about basketball. So we're going to have offseason talks. Steph Curry said, enjoyed watching the greatness out there. Greatness at Giannis, Draymond Green, Donovan Mitchell, Kevin Durant, um, John Morant, Bam Adebayo, Rudy Gobert, CJ McCollum, um, Robert Covington, LeBron again, DeJounte Murray, Kendrick Perkins. What was Kendrick Perkins saying two weeks ago? I ain't trying to hear that. Um, RJ Hampton, RJ Hampton saying, y'all was, <laughs> y'all was talking like Giannis ain't got no bag. Maybe he don't need one. <laughs> what is RJ Hampton talking about? Um, all right, man. Thank y'all so much for watching, man. Let me know what you think. I'm super excited. I'm super excited. Bleach Report dropped some, some fire shirts. I'm not even gonna lie. 
that's not even a free that's a free plug they didn't pay me to say that um god the Giannis story is so great and we'll talk about it more i'll see y'all soon